the echo dot um, provides a lot of help to our visually impaired and totally blind uh, consumers. Uh, something that we use on a regular basis to um, order products from Amazon, order food, um, we can listen to the news and so on. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to unmute Alexa right now. You'll see that it's red. I'm going to describe a lot of things here. I'm going to unmute. Okay. Alexa, what time is it? The time is 8.37 p.m. Have a good night. Okay, and it's telling me to have a good night. Alexa, what's the temperature? Right now, it's 59 degrees Fahrenheit. Alexa, volume 10. Okay, so I was able to um, get the time. I was able to get the weather. Now, let's say I want to hear the news. Alexa, play 1010 Winds. 1010 Winds from Odyssey. Radio.com is now Odyssey. Discover this station and more on Odyssey. Music, news, sports, and podcasts. Find it all on the Odyssey app. Make any Alexa, place your happy. Stop. And enjoy reading. Now, let's say I just want some articles from a newspaper. Alexa, play the New York Times. From the New York Times. From the New York Times, I'm Michael Lavaro. Here's what you need to know today. Alexa, stop. Now, again, that was just a few examples of what the, this small device can do for uh, our consumers. Um, another thing that it can do is control devices in the home. Um, I'm going to be adjusting my phone uh, from time to, to time so that way you can see certain things happen. I will describe them as well. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to aim my camera over to the light that I have here in the living room. Alexa, turn living room light off. Okay. Alexa, turn living room light on. Okay. So automation is one of the big things here. Um, a lot of our consumers don't know that they have a light on or off. Um, having a lamp connected to a wireless device is a simple way of figuring out if you have your light on or, or, or off. Another thing that we can do here is adjust the temperature in our thermostat. Um, Alexa, set temperature to 80 degrees. The heat set to 80. Okay, and the heat is now set to 80. Alexa, set temperature to 67 degrees. The heat set to 67. I also have Alexa set up to my alarm system. A lot of these uh, components um, really don't cost much. For example, a plug-in into the lamp is about 15 to $20. You don't need a special hub to connect it. It'll connect straight to the uh, Echo Dot. I'm going to mute Alexa for now. I'm sorry, can you please mute your phone if you're on? Thank you. Uh, other things that you can do with the Alexa is schedule your um, appointments, um, reminders, uh, medication, um, just about anything. Uh, this, all, this Echo Dot and other smart speakers are also great for children that are autistic. You can um, just have multiple schedules. Uh, for example, if, if uh, you have them doing chores, uh, you can say, you know, Alexa, remind um, Carlos, Jeff, uh, to throw out the garbage at 3 o'clock. Remind Carlos and Jeff uh, at 3.05 to throw out the garbage. Uh, you can also send those messages uh, from your home or anywhere else or, uh, uh, around the world. Um, and it'll go ahead and, and just provide that uh, to, to your child or adult. Um, so it's a great little device. Uh, if you have it connected to your cell phone, um, individuals can also make and receive calls through their smart speakers. It's great for emergencies as well. If you have more than one smart speaker throughout the house, you can actually send a message through the entire house, uh, which is another great option. Um, let's say someone needs assistance in one of the rooms, then the 
that individual can uh, request help throughout the entire house with multiple uh, smart speakers. So that's one basic thing that we all use on a daily basis. And we, again, take it for granted, but it does so, so much for us. Um, next thing I want to get to is the assistive uh, the accessibility on the iPhone. Uh, the iPhone has a screen reader as well as magnification. I'm briefly going to go through that because there are several other apps that uh, I like to go through. Um, so I'm going to start sharing my phone screen here. Okay, it should be broadcasting in a couple of seconds. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and go down to accessibility. Now, there are multiple ways of opening up your speech, your magnification programs. You can triple click on the right side of the uh, phone or triple click on your home button, depending on the type of iPhone that you have. You can go to your settings and then accessibility, and you'll have a list of accessibility features there. Uh, the first one is voiceover, so I'm going to tap on voiceover once. I'm going to turn voiceover on. Voiceover on, settings, accessibility, back button. Can someone tell me if they are able to hear the speech? Yes, we can hear, yep. Okay, great, thank you. Um, in order to work with voiceover, you actually need several hand gestures. So right now, what I'm going to do is uh, swipe to the right with one finger, so that way I can scroll down. Voiceover. Voiceover. Uh, voiceover speaks items on the screen. Tap once to select an item. Double tap to activate the selected item. Learn more. Link. So there, it actually Double already gives you... activate embedded link some instructions. You tap once to select an item, you double tap it uh, to activate that item. You can change the rate at which it speaks. You can um, change the speed. Um, you can add Braille on, onto this. There are so many things that you can do with voiceover. Um, right now, the uh, rate that it's speaking is kind of slow for me because I've been working with speech for decades. Uh, for some other people, it may be too fast, but you can increase or decrease the rate uh, to what you prefer until you get used to it. So I'm going to go ahead Double and tap go to back. Tap back. once to select voiceover. Voice Just over. to turn it off on. for now. Voiceover. I double tap to turn it up to turn it off. I'm going to go back, and now I'm going to turn on Zoom. Zoom is the magnification program here. Um, as soon as I turned it on, uh, you'll only be able to see a portion of my screen. That's because it's magnified, so it turns into a bit of a puzzle. When you work with magnification, um, it, it, it's, it's difficult up until the point you learn where everything is on your screen. You have to do, create this whole mental picture. So if I take my th uh, three fingers... I can actually pull it over to the left, so you, you actually need three fingers to, to move around. And in the upper left-hand corner, it says accessibility, zoom. Underneath that, it provides you with the title again, zoom. Underneath that, it says zoom mag magnifies the entire screen. Double tap three fingers to zoom. Uh, drag three fingers to move around the screen. Uh, double tap three fingers and drag to change zoom. So you can increase, decrease the size of zoom as well with your fingers, or you can go down through the menu and select 2x, 3x, and so on. I'm going to go ahead and just scroll over to the upper right-hand corner. I'm going to tap on zoom and turn it off. Um, I'm going to back out of accessibility. Uh, there is another option. It's a magnifier and it should be on. Okay. The magnifier is, it should go on and when you open up a window, it should be able to provide you something similar to a handheld magnifier with the magnification of 2, 3x, and so on. For some reason, it's not working now, so we have gremlins uh, causing issues for us. But um, 
that should work. And uh, if we go down the list, though, uh, you'll see that there are many, many other options here. You can actually change the, the display and the text size motion for those uh, individuals that that have uh, issues with their hands. Um, the list goes on and on. There's just so much. The audio descriptions, if it's available, you can turn that on. Um, voice control. Uh, you can change the way the side button works. And most of you probably don't know this, but the Apple icon in the back of uh, every iPhone is a button as well. So you can uh, set that uh, button in the back of your phone to do certain things. Uh, usually you double tap to turn a feature on or off. So I'm going to get out of settings. I'm going to go back to my home screen here. And I'm going to open up the accessibility folder. Accessibility is a very personal thing. Um, you could have three, four people uh, come in with the same eye disease, let's say macular de degeneration. Each one of them will see things differently. So, you know, when someone comes in, you can't say, oh, you, know, you have macular degeneration? Here, this is what's going to work for you. Unfortunately, it does not work that way. Um, you would have to still provide the individual um, different assessments to, to determine what is best for them. Colors, uh, font size, the list goes on and on. Uh, one of the items I'm going to, or apps I'm going to turn on now is the Tap Tap C. Tap Tap C does work best when voiceover is on, so I'm going to turn voiceover on by triple clicking on the right. You have to tap quickly in order for voiceover to go on. Uh, I want to welcome you into my home. I actually am aiming my phone towards my TV. I'm about to turn voiceover on. Okay, so I'm on the camera button now. I'm going to double tap. So Angel, we can't see your screen anymore. Oh, no? Okay, one moment. Let me go back to... Let me share this again. Okay. How's that now? That's good. Okay. So I'm going back to where I was. I'm going to go back to take a picture. It took a picture of what's in front of the camera. And I didn't have voiceover on because I had to turn it off. All right, there we go. Voiceover on. Right, Gallery chair okay. about. Camera button. Button. Camera button. Picture three in progress. Picture three is black flat screen TV on brown wooden TV rack. So it gives you a, a brief description of what's in front of the camera. Um, so it told me that there is a black flat screen TV, a brown wooden TV rack. Now, if you needed to hear this again, we can go back to repeat. We can go to the gallery of pictures. We can also share this picture with someone else. So let's say there's a dog here and it tells you small black dog and you want to share that picture with someone, you can go ahead and do that because you know what you're sharing. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and turn off Alert. voiceover. Magnify. Selected. Vo voiceover off. I'm going to go ahead and close the Tap Tap C app. I'm going to go back to accessibility folder. And what I'm going to show you next is the iNote. The iNote is an application by the Department of Engraving. And what it can do is it can recognize money. So imagine you, you're uh, paying for an item with cash and you get some change, but you don't know what the change is. With this app, you can open it prior to paying for, uh, for your item. And when you get your change, you can quickly scan your bills. And you don't have to worry whether it's, uh, you know, it's, the front, the 
sideways or anything. So I'm just going to go ahead and place some money in front of the device there. Five dollars front. Five dollars back. Twenty dollars back. One dollar front. So as you notice, I've put bills in many different ways, sideways, backwards, upside down, and it was still able to, to recognize that currency. Now, this is just, um, this is just to identify money. Um, it's, it's a single application specifically for that. So it doesn't have the bells and whistles. I'm going to close iNote now. I'm going to go back to the accessibility folder. Um, please, if you have your, your phone on, please mute it. Please mute your phone. Thank you. Okay. The next app I'm going to introduce is the Seeing AI app. The Seeing AI app um, was developed by Microsoft, and it has the bells and whistles on there. So I'm going to open that up right now. Short text mask. So one of the things it does is identifies. Uh, text. It's a short text. In other words, whatever you put in front of it, it'll read quickly. In this case, a red mask. That's because in the uh, lower right hand corner of where my TV is at, Memories I, mask. I have a, a, a big box that's that with mass, and mass is in large print. Um, but I'm going to put something in front of it. Panko, Japanese style breadcrumbs, serve it. Panko. So basically anything I've put in and front nutrition, of it. Nutrition, nutrition facts, odd eight servings per container, two slash three cup, mask. It'll read it. Now, let's say I wanted a document, document. read. Hold steady. Now, this isn't a... No text recognized. Well, I don't know why I did that because there's no text Hold there. Hold steady. Let me Processing. Go ahead. Hold steady. Okay, so it did take a picture of the text. Um, if we had voiceover on, it could read everything on there. But what I'm going to do is hit the play button, which is located in the lower left-hand corner. I'm going to pause it. It's basically reading the recipe that's on the back. So I can go ahead and increase or decrease the font size so that way I can read it myself. I can go ahead and forward it to a friend. Uh, you know, maybe they, they're interested in, in the recipe as well. I'm going to go back and there is the back arrow in the upper left hand corner. Hold steady. And Hold product. the next I'm going to do the next feature of the CI app is the product. Um, these applications are not foolproof. Um, you will have some errors come up, uh, so you may want to attempt more than once or twice when scanning certain items. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to grab a can here. It's mixed vegetables. Um, usually these items are placed on the shelf with the label facing you, and the codes are in the back. Uh, with Cereal boxes, anything in a paper box, the codes are usually on the bottom. So when you pick up boxes, scan the bottom first, because usually that's where you'll find uh, the code. When you have an item and you're trying to uh, get the code, you'll you'll hear a tone once you get close to the um, barcode. Processing. This not one found recognized. the code. And it says not recognized. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to give it another shot. Processing. Not recognized. Okay. Again, the gremlins are here. Processing. A whole mixed vegetables. There we go. So it's telling me it's mixed vegetables, but what kind of vegetables? There's more options on here. In the bottom, there's a share button. Uh, so if you want to share it with a family member, uh, so that way they can see what you're you're listening to um, and tell you what's in there. Or and you can hit the more info button, which is located in the lower right-hand corner. I'm going to tap on that now. 
Um, it brings you to a window that says uh, a whole mixed vegetables. Uh, I'm going to hit the play button in the lower left hand corner so that way it can read the information back to me. We're not hearing it. Is that supposed to be reading out loud? I'm sorry? Is that supposed to be reading out loud? We're not hearing. I'm not hearing that. Hmm. Okay, one moment. Let me see if something happened with the speech when I did that. Let me know if you hear it now. Were you able to hear that? No. No, we can hear it. Okay, one moment. Okay, I just turned it on again. Are you able to hear that? No. Nope. Okay. Let me shut down the program and restart it here. Short tech mass product. Okay, let me see again the product again. Process a whole mixed vegetables. Okay, then I got more information. And let me know if you hear it now. Okay, were you able to hear it that time? No, I no. couldn't. I was not Angel. Angel, I think it might be one of iOS's quirks. You know how Apple is. I don't know. It's weird. The, yeah, there was also an update to seeing AI, so I may be having an issue with that. Um, okay, well, it did go ahead and read the ingredients in the can to me, uh, so I was able to uh, identify what's in that can. Um, I'm going to move on to the fourth uh, option here, which person. is person. Um, so you can actually scan a room with this device, and it'll tell you who's how who's in the room and how far they are they, they are from you. Now, when I say that it's able to tell you who's in the room, it only works when you take a picture of someone and then label it with their name. So I have my daughter here, and I'm going to scan the room slowly. Um, it should tell me that Angela is in the room. So I'm going to move my phone slowly. Angela near top right, seven feet away. Were you able to hear that? Yes. Yep. Yes. Oh, okay. So Zero it, faces. So it says that Angela is to the right, and she's about seven feet away from me. So I'm going to do that again. One face near top right, seven feet away. Angela near top right, eight feet away, zero faces. So if there were other people in the room and you don't already have an image of them with their name, it'll just say person um, X amount of distance from you. At least you have an idea of how many people are in the room. Uh, also wear an earpiece. You don't want people to know that you're scanning them. Um, I'm going to move on to the next item here, which is the money identifier. It's somewhat similar to uh, what I introduced before, the iNote. Currency. So I'm going to grab the money here. I'm going to just go. Five U.S. dollars. Five U.S. dollars. Now, if you hear, there is a, a slight difference. The iNote said $5 back, $5 front. Here, it just lets you know $5 U.S. Okay, both applications don't do coins. Um, so again, assistive technology is a personal thing. If you're an individual that likes to have the front facing up all the time, then the iNote is for you. If you really don't care what you know, how your your money is, whether face up or face down, then you can use the Seeing AI. But the Seeing AI app does something that the iNote doesn't. Let's say you have a bag with you, and that's where you have your money. With the iNote, the camera light does not go on. So it can't identify the money in your bag if it's too dark. Here, with the Seeing AI, the light is on. You can actually uh, see the reflection on the TV um, across from me. That allows individuals to scan money in dark areas, their purses, their wallets, um, so that way no one else around you knows what you have on you, which is great. 
I'm going to move on to the next item here. Scene. Preview. It's scene. So I'm going to go ahead and point at my daughter again. I'm going to take a picture. Processing. A woman sitting on a couch holding a laptop. Okay, a woman sitting on a couch holding a laptop. So that gave me some information. The uh, whole thing is, oh, I'm expecting you. a. Hi, Cassie. I love you. Can I have a kissy? Uh, I'm expecting a woman to be there. Meanwhile, my daughter is only 16 years old. I love you. I'm okay. watching a little lesson about for you. Now, the this feature is not. I love you. 100% foolproof. Um, if I take a picture of what's across from me, it'll tell me it's a TV. But I also have a fish tank to the left. I'm going to take a picture of that. Processing. Probably a TV on a wall. So it thinks that my fish tank is a TV on a wall. It's a 75 gallon tank. So, it, it, you know, again, it, it gets easily confused. Uh, it goes by the shape of, of items in your, in your home. There are a few other options here. You do have color options. Color identifiers, they're okay, but it depends on the lighting you have in a room. For example, if you have navy blue and your room is kind of dim, it may recognize it as black. Um, certain colors, uh, light blue colors, may be identified as gray. Um, so don't always, you know, count on, on the color identifier being right 100% of the time. Most of the time it, it isn't. Another great feature on here is the handwriting um, recognition. As long as you don't write like a, a, a most doctors do with prescriptions, um, this will identify handwritten notes. So someone leaves a handwritten note somewhere on your desk, uh, you can actually scan it with the Sting AI app and it should be able to read it back to you. The last feature on here, I'm going to click on that, is light. Let me go back to see. You heard a little tone. That's letting me know that there is light in the room. A lot of people that have a uh, visual impairment that very low vision or are totally blind cannot make out light period so if you use the light feature you can actually identify whether there's light in your room but then again that light can be coming from your windows or the light source could be a bulb so what you can do is move your a phone up to the ceiling or wherever your light source usually is and if the light is on, the tone will get higher. So I'm going to do that now. Light. I don't know that's really for kids. It seems more like, I know, but it might be for kids that are more, like, um, surprised, like, uh, like preview. more, um, Arthur, could you mute uh, your phone, well, please? So, um, as you can tell, if, you can identify where the light source is coming from. You can tell whether your light is on, and then you can turn it off if you, if you like. So that's what seeing AI does for you. Okay. Now, I heard someone say, oh, this, you know, it's, it's, it's not more for kids. You'd be surprised what kids can learn. Um, and it's important to get kids uh, into the assistive technology sooner rather than later. Um, as yeah, you heard I, at the I, beginning. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to dismiss anything or say anything wasn't worthwhile. I just, uh, for, for me, oh, no, no, no. he's not as, he's not as uh, a, you know, he doesn't have the same amount of uh, um, vision issues. He's low vision, but not completely without vision. So I'm just not sure it's, but it's still helpful to know. So I appreciate it. And I'm sorry, but I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, no, 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 no problem at all. No problem at all. But it, it is important to, to get the kids started early. Um, I ran uh, children's groups uh, for about 12 years. And you'd be amazed at, at, you know, the years went by and how many kids came back and said, you know, that all the training helped them get through high school and some went on to college and got the degrees. Uh, some still had the computers that we were we were able to provide at that time, which was awesome. So, 
uh, the sooner you get your kids in, into, you know, playing with the voice, magnification, uh, the much it'll be much easier for them down the road. Thank so you very I'm much. Going, you're welcome. I'm going to go ahead and close Seeing AI. And another app that's available out there is Be My Eyes. Let's say mom and dad are not around and um, you're unable to see the date on the milk. You're unable to identify certain items or if you drop something on the floor and you need assistance finding it. Uh, Be My Eyes is a volunteer app. Uh, as, you, as it states on the screen, there's 4.6 million volunteers assisting almost 300,000 uh, visually impaired and blind individuals. Um, I'm actually a volunteer, and what happens is that when someone needs assistance, it actually goes to five um, volunteers, sometimes more, and the first volunteer to pick up is the one that assists the individual. Uh, I have had calls on, you know, can you tell me if the shoes are the same color? Uh, can you tell me if the milk has expired? Um, this is all great, um, but you do have to be careful when you use this app. These individuals are only volunteers. They're not certified in any way, shape, or form. So don't give out personal information whatsoever. Uh, it's just, you know, can you tell me if uh, I spilled something, uh, I, I, I dropped my, my, um, my ring, can you uh, tell me if you can uh, see it, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, so Be My Eyes is a pretty good app. Um, Script Talk is another app that uh, older kids can, can, can use. Uh, it can tell them where there uh, are pharmacies that can provide them with large print uh, labels or labels that can be scanned. So um, if I hit Find Pharmacy... I'm going to type in zip so code here. Going to hit go. And then if I scroll down, the results for talking labels, large print, braille, or translated labels, there are 41 scriptability pharmacies within five miles. So we can scroll down and I can see all of the pharmacies that are able to assist. This also works with voiceover, so this information can be read, read back to you if you are totally blind. I'm going to close this app out. Uh, there is a GPS program out there, that Lazarillo, um, that can help you identify where certain stores are. Um, you have to be very careful when you use it. Uh, always use assistance wherever possible. Um, I'm going to turn this on. It'll probably give my you my location right now, but that's okay. You are on Lehman Street 26, Lebanon, PA. And if I had voiceover on, I can go ahead and scroll from left to right. I want to find Intersection a, a Harrison place. Avenue and Lehman Street, 55 feet to the west. Intersection Beach Street and Harrison Avenue, 112 feet okay. to your left. I clicked on um, a restaurant, restaurant here. Restaurant, Italian Village Pizza, 249 feet behind you. Okay, so it's letting me know that the Italian Village is 223 feet behind me, and I want to walk there. And it's asking me to choose an app. I can use the Lazarillo app. I can use Google Maps, Apple Maps. I'm going to use the current map. Loading instructions. Head east on Lehman Street toward and Hanover Street. Okay. And if I wanted to hear all the directions and I have voiceover on, I can open up the full um, direction list and actually just scroll through each one and it would read back head east on Lehman Street toward North Hanover Street um, and then turn right. Destination will be on the left, which is actually correct. So I can find the different locations, um, food, uh, let's like the routing here, food banks, um, health, uh, the list goes on and on. 
So this is another app here that can assist individuals uh, get from one place to another. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, it's important to um, start giving access to speech magnification to your kids. Uh, I say that because in the 12 years that I worked with kids, a lot of the kids were shy or embarrassed to use the devices in their classes. A lot of the kids didn't tell their friends or classmates that they had visual impairments. Um, but once they, they were actually in a group setting and they worked together and saw that there were other kids that had the same issues as them, they got much more comfortable. Um, they actually started using their devices more. Um, you, you can start off with, with uh, iPad. iPad has the same accessibility as the iPhone that I was just using. Um, again, there's voiceover, there's magnification. You can also just use Siri. Siri does quite a bit. You can ask Siri to make calls for you. You can text family members or friends. You can have those text messages read back to you. You don't have to learn all those hand gestures, but that's a, a, a huge beginning. Um, also, if you go to applevis.com, there's a list of applications out there, not just for adults, but for kids uh, to play games uh, and hear the information going back and forth. Um, you can play games with other individuals, for example, chess. Um, and you're probably thinking, well, how are they going to remember, you know, where the pawn is and everything? It describes all of that to you. And you, you'd be surprised kids catch onto things quickly. They'll remember the board as though, you know, they were looking at it, which is awesome. I've seen it done so many times. Um, and that's the end of my presentation. Any questions? Um, that was really good. I know Meredith had a question. I wanted to make sure you got it answered. Um, she said, would it be possible to get the names of the apps again? Um, that you oh, sure. Sure. Um, there, there's a number of apps out there. Um, there's Tap, Tap, C, T A P, T A P, S E E. Uh, there's also um, I note E Y E note N O T E that's from the Department of Engraving. Then there's the big one that has the bells and whistles, which is Seeing A I S E E A I. Um, Be My Eyes is if you need a volunteer to assist you. And then there's Lazarillo, which is the GPS um, application. Angela, and these me, are just, right. yes. I was going to say, Angela, this is Arthur uh, earlier. I had to interrupt it. I, I apologize again. Um, That's okay. My son is low vision and has aniridia. So he, he's like three years old, three or four. So he's much younger. So that's why I was saying like he has a little bit less autonomy to be able to use some of these apps. So when I said like children, it's for like, you know, I'm sure like lots of uh um, children that have vision issues um, who are a little more advanced uh, can use some of these things that you recommended and they're very helpful. But for some children who are much younger in the three to four, you know, or three to six range who have less autonomy or usage of, um, you know, these devices, I'm just wondering if you have any insight um, about any apps that might be useful for, for them. Sure. Audio. Audio books, um, get them used to listening to books, uh, get them used to the voice. Um, you, can, you can change the speed. As, as they continue to listen, they'll, they'll get so used to it that they'll get bored if you keep it at the same rate every single time. Um, for, for us, us humans, we, we talk more than 300 words per minute. Imagine me talking to you at a slow rate. You probably get very bored. <laughs> uh, same thing. Same thing with kids. Um, 
they they get used to the to the audio and the next thing you know you, you're raising the rate at which it's it's providing the feedback and that with some people it'll get to a point that all they hear are are tones and they are able to pick up every single word that was said okay that's really helpful thank you very much sure hi this is rachel hi rachel hi okay first of all i wanted to say something to arthur i my son used to use a I used to have an app on my phone called Ballyland Magic App, which teaches the gestures, and it's perfect for a three- or four-year-old, I think. I mean, my son is a little older, maybe like five, six, but I think a three-, four-year-old can also. It teaches the gestures, so it gives them a heads-up of eventually being able to use iPad, iPhone with, um, What's it called? with that gestures. Ballyland Magic App. I'm Thank almost you. sure that's what it was called. Ballyland. I think it's B-A-L-L-I or Y. Ballyland Magic App. So that was very cute and a lot of fun. And then there's like, I don't know if he's going to do Braille or not. I don't know what his vision level is or if his vision is going to deteriorate. But there is like some kind of Madeline something game with, you know, teaching basic Braille, whatever. But that's another story. Um, so I actually had a question for you also. Um, what, I, I don't know your name, the presenter. A, a, Angel is your name? Angel, yes. Angel. Okay, so um, actually two questions. First of all, about the Alexa Echo Dot that you, you, you spoke about in the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. How do you, you said for the lamp, it's very simple. You just connect it to, you buy this like cheap thing for $20 and, and you can connect it to Alexa. But what about like your thermostat and your, and you said to your security system, is that more yes. intensive? Like, do you need an electrician to do that? No, you don't need an electrician at all. Um, actually, the thermostat is the same two wires uh, that are on the back of your current thermostat. So when you take off your old thermostat, you just make sure that you put the same two wires back on, on your new wireless uh, thermostat. For the security system, you can buy, the, buy it in a box. Um, you can set it up yourself and then um, have uh, Alexa just turn on the uh, Alexa feature and it'll go ahead and set the the alarm on off um, and I can give you a quick demo of that Alexa where do we get it though what what was it called where do we get them is it like on Amazon oh, yeah, it's just, on Amazon but uh, I, I use the simple safe at, at home but it actually works with almost any um, wireless alarm system out there and a lot of the what boxes are they called, now. These well, things, the devices that you attach or whatever. Oh, uh, to, to lamps and 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 so on. Uh, they, they're just Wi-Fi uh, connectors, uh, outlet connectors. If you go to Amazon.com, I think they have three for like twenty twenty-five dollars. So it's called Wi-Fi to, outlet and, connectors. Yes, and just make sure that they are uh, Alexa friendly. Alexa or yes. Google Home, whatever it is that you use. There is an extensive okay. list of Alexa supported devices and you can look at that on Amazon's website as as okay. well to be sure that you're not um, getting the wrong, because um, I have r run into some sometimes where yes, there are devices that you think, oh, well, this is a smart system. It, sh it, it, it ought to work fine with Alexa and it doesn't. And so that's right. why I would say check that support list and that way you, you know you're you're in the right. You're not going out and wasting your money on something that you get home and then you find out That's it right. doesn't work. And, and read okay. those reviews. Those, those yes. reviews are very important. It's a big deal. And, 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 and as I mentioned before, if you go to applevis.com, uh, uh, there are many apps there. There's, there's actually over 2,000 accessible apps uh, for kids on up. So just go in there, um, just go through the list and do a search for children's apps, and a, a lot of them will come up for you. This is okay, and I have one more question, if that's okay. Um, uh, and um, I have the Amazon Basic Microwave that has Alexa built into it. Yes. You can actually link with your Echo Dot or your Echo, and it will... That's right allow you to basically heat up food or whatever without even having to press any of the buttons, but... Yes, you, you even have stoves that do that now, and, and refrigerators. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. um, so, so I just want question? to ask one more question, if that's okay, about seeing AI. So I found that, like, you know, yes, it will read text to me, but what if I want to then scroll through the text, let's say word by word or character by character, 
didn't seem like it worked. Like it seemed like, you know, with a regular voiceover character by character, word by word gesture. Well, what you would have to do with that um, is do the document version. Don't do the, the simple text version, which is the second component in the Steam AI, and then save the document, and then that can be read back with voiceover. So it has to be saved first? Yes. And I save it within Seeing AI? Well, you, you can save it within uh, Seeing AI. You could have Seeing AI read it back, but you can also save it and have it read back with VoiceOver if you wanted to. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check it out. Okay, thank you. Sure. Um, someone else had a question? Uh, we have a question. Um, our son's 12, and he does just about everything in schoolwork um, through a, um, an iPad Pro. And so we've struggled in particularly um, with some of the apps that he uses to, you know, fill out, like he'll fill out with his Apple pen, he'll save it, and then trying to send that via email or something to the teacher, they're huge files. So we, we use, um, he takes a picture with his iPad Pro of say, say there's a five page worksheet. Let's just say it's uh, math worksheets. Where our limitation is he then sends that to Bookshare so that he can edit and mark up the answers, but then the file sizes are way too large, so we find that he only can send one page at a time and email it to right. the teacher. Right. And we okay. haven't found I any apps other than Bookshare to be able to write up and mark up a document to, to send or share that with people. Um, there's so, so many voice ways stream, to go. But voice stream is limited on how much it zooms in. Okay. Um, you may want to try seeing AI and um, take the picture of the document and then save it. It should save it as a text file. If not, um, I'm trying to think Adobe will actually save that document as a text file under accessibility. There's an app called Paperback that might be good for that if it's like a web page or a workbook on the internet um, that you can just simply um, hit the share at the bottom of Safari and then copy the URL to your clipboard, then go back to the Paperback app and just paste it in there or hit like the um copy button at the top and then they'll give you the url hit copy and then it'll basically save it so you can read it that's why so what i do what the problem i have is he as i end up taking page by page from bookshare every pdf that's marked out and i spend hours printing them out on a printer and then rescanning that let's say the 15 20 pages into one final pdf to send to the teacher what about google drive or notability if, I, i'm so sorry this is google uh, drive this is, is behind is, on the uh, markup features you I'm can sorry, this you is, can oh. do uh, voice to text on it like you, but not the markup mm. um yeah, if i could jump in Go ahead. Go ahead, oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to recommend if it's an issue with taking, um, if, if it's an issue with the fact that the files are large, you may have to move towards cloud services like Google Drive or Dropbox. And then it would be a matter of sharing that Dropbox link with whatever instructor or whatever, you know, class he's taking. Um, because those cloud services are equipped to handle larger files, and then that would alleviate the issue of you trying to go through Apple Mail or email or whatever email programs he, he's using, and then it not accepting it because it's too large um, of a file. I think with Google Drive, by default, you get 16 gigs. And then with um, Dropbox, I think they give you two gigs. I have the uh, Dropbox Plus the, uh, Pro plan, so I'm, I've, got, I've got two terabytes of, uh, of storage. That may be an option for you there. As far as writing goes and m marking up and doing all the other editing stuff, 
unfortunately with iOS, it's more limited than if you're using something along the lines of a computer or a note taker, like a Braille note or a Braille sense. And that's just been my finding with iOS and word processing and editing. Thank you very much. A, the yeah, Dropbox that, that, or the Drive is a good idea once we figure that out. There is uh, an OCR app out there. It's by the National Federation for the Blind. Um, it's ninety nine dollars yes. though. It, it, it's, it's up there in price. It's uh, one of the most expensive uh, apps out there. That might be something that can help you. Um, so um, I'm trying to remember the exact. It is called sorry, that one. Reader. It's called KNFB okay, that's right. Reader. The, the KNFB Reader. Yeah, it's not great, and I don't think it's up to date. There's another one which I'm not sure if it's still available on the App Store called Text Detective. That's pretty good. You know, that's a great question. It was for a time, and I'm not sure. I will have to look into that. Angel, do you know if that's still available? I remember no, that. No, I don't. Prismo is another option, and it is also an OCR app like KNFB Reader. It's spelled P R I Z as in Zulu, M as in Mike, O as in. Um, orientation option, however you want to pronounce phonetically, do that Prismo. And there's a light version and then there's a paid version. I do believe that the paid version is slightly cheaper than KNFB Reader. It is also fully voiceover um, tested and accessibility approved in terms of um, in, in the blindness and low vision realm. So perhaps maybe that's another um, app that you may want to look into if you're not willing to spend that $99 price tag because it can be a little high. I'm, I'm sure for a lot of people, understandably. There's one called Text Detective that was available at one point. I'm not sure if it's still on the App Store, um, but that one's really good for like, if you just wanted to scan like a document or whatever into there. Yes. And then it'll read it back. I know exactly what you're talking about and I have not used or played around with that app in years, and so I would not know if that's I would not know if that's available. I know. Yeah, I, I, I just checked, and and text detective is not on there anymore. I had a feeling. I just had a feeling. Any other questions? I know somebody in the chat also wrote. I I think you might have mentioned, but uh, I think it's always worth a mention. Uh, the read to go and the uh, um, bookshare that's online for kids, for anybody really. read to go is a great free option. If you want to pay a slightly higher price, I think it's a, around a $10 price tag, you can get an app called Voice Dream Reader and it will also read Bookshare as well. And I, I personally, I prefer the interface a little bit better than read to go because it's a little bit more robust and has a little bit more to work with in terms of navigation and extra um, visual features, but read to go is a good start. That's R-E-A-D, the number two, and then GL, and that should be a free app. Um, it's, um, it's, it's, actually, it's actually 1999. Oh, that's right. Thank you. I forgot. And some of you, um, you know, sometimes your school will pay for some of these apps if you, if um, depending on your school district and stuff. I know some of them. They'll go ahead and install them in um, for you. You had that experience. Yeah, and, and if your child is with the New York State Commission for the Blind, um, sometimes state councils will go ahead and pay for those apps, and they'll reach out to the school as well. Okay. You might get a gift uh, a, a gift card instead of, uh, you know, having them give you cash or anything like that, but it'll be for the app store for you to purchase that app for your child. Hey, Angelo, I have a question. Yes. Um, what is your experience? My son, he has CVI, and he's also cerebral palsy. What is your experience uh, with these different apps that can be uh, used with a kid like with um, multiple disabilities? 
Um, as I mentioned earlier, if you go into the settings and you go into accessibility in um, the iOS and the Apple um, uh, program, uh, there is something called switch control. Uh, where he doesn't ha have to do all the hand gestures. Um, there, it, there's also a possibility of, of attaching a keyboard, uh, a, um, a Bluetooth keyboard to your device. So if he's able to, to reach certain keys, um, he can use what's called sticky keys, where he can press one key once, it'll, it'll actually stay on, and then you can press another key to have an, a command happen on the screen. So there are uh, ways of, of getting um, things done uh, on that iOS or and on the computer as well. Um, so there are options out there. And, and in some situations, the keyboard can be removed altogether. Um, and if he if he's able to to move his hand enough he can actually write what he needs to and it'll go ahead and put it in print on the screen so he may use a a tablet a drawing tablet to uh write his information out if he's able to do that but there are many devices out there for him and actually the lighthouse guild has um a company in the building sheila do you know the name of that company um that has uh equipment for individuals with cp no i don't sorry okay um i'll, I'll try and get that information thanks sure any other questions this is Linda. I, I just actually wanted just to touch base with uh, Cynthia and Mike for a moment as a parent of a blind child who's now in college. Um, I just wondered that the markup part, I think I know what you're speaking of is just where the teacher has done some correction on it and he's supposed to add to it or do whatever needs to be done. Is that what I'm understanding this paper is that you have? Um, it's actually so our son is still able to zoom in and, and use his pencil, his iPad pencil to write on everything. So this would be math worksheets, science worksheets, vocabulary uh, question worksheets. So it's all the writing, um, the answering questions. Um, he might read a short story and then have like a five page worksheet that he has to go in depth and write answers to. Okay. Um, math equations, all that. So by the time he marks everything up and then tries to email each page to the teacher, it's just, it's really cumbersome. There has to be a way to combine all this. The problem that we have when we do try to upload it to Google Drive is a lot of times it drops the, it can't distinguish between the markups that were added versus the original text and it drops those markups. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so, I'm, I'm just thinking it's, it's hard on you on the back end trying to do what you need to for your son to get it to the teacher. So um, is there something else that you can uh, maybe talk with the teacher about doing it a different way, whether you could fax over, you know, old fashioned way, whatever's easiest for you to get it to back to the teacher. If or can the teacher? Print. Yeah. Can 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 the um can you or the teacher just take screenshots of the, the changes that are required? Uh, email it to to your son and have your son print it out, make the changes, and then send them back. Um, he still does well. He does everything digitally on his iPad. So if he printed something out, then he would need his uh, CCTV machine, which can't be transported classroom to classroom with him. Mm -hmm. So he really has to stick back to be able to do an iPad Pro to zoom in to do that writing. Well, it, um, it, if he's carrying it's been, it's his hard. if he's carrying his iPad Pro, why isn't he able to use that as a CCTV? All he has to do is open up the camera and use the pinch effect to um, increase or decrease the mag magnification. So, so trying to go back to like the paper pencil writing. 
We could we could try right. that. Mm -hmm. right. And there are stands available for the iPad, so you, he can use them as a CCTV. Right. But, you know, so as that, a, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. As a parent, try to do what's the least stressful for everyone. <laughs> but you just have to voice that to the teacher because they have no idea. <laughs> yeah. They're learning as well, so... Exactly. <laughs> Hi, this is Kim. I have a question. Hi, Kim. For um, someone who is totally blind using CNAI, sometimes it's yeah. frustrating because um, once you've shown the, the iPhone the text that you want read, getting that to go away and do the next thing, it's still, I guess I need some sort of clear all button or something like that because it keeps reading pieces of the previous thing when I try to go to a new one. So how do you, how do you tell it that, that you're that, ready for something new? That's because it's, it's still in memory. Um, usually to, to get away from that, um, you go to the back button and that should clear it. So the back, back one is in the upper left, yes, in the upper left-hand corner. Okay. So one, once once it gives you the information, it starts reading, just swipe from right to left, go to the uh, back button, uh, tap on it twice, um, and it'll take you back, and then you can go on to, to, to retake a, a picture of the document. You could also do a two-finger scrub, which is taking two fingers and then moving a, a swift back and forth motion from the right to the left, and then... A lot of times, if it's a voiceover friendly app, that will also invoke the back function. So you don't have to find yeah. the back button. And if I, let's say that it's a, a document and I have, I'm in the document mode and I let it center and, and read, if I don't get the section that I need or it doesn't get all of it, should I back out of it and do the whole thing again? Yes. Yes, it's, it's important to, to do it at least twice um, because depending on the distance, you may not have the entire document in view. Uh, you might only have the top portion or the bottom portion. Um, I usually tell my consumers to try and keep it at least a foot away from, from the iPhone. I have a stand that I use. Um, if you use both your hands, it's kind of difficult. You can put the paper on, on the table, but are you holding it at the right angle? Are you holding the camera flat enough to to, to catch that document? No idea. Um, if you have a, <laughs> exactly. So if 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 you have a stand, um, you might get used to you know holding the, the paper uh, at a distance. It's, it's basically muscle memory. Okay, I got to keep my arm here. My stand is here. And again, they purchase all all types of stands, and you can adjust stands to to you know anywhere from a few inches up to a foot. Um, so you may want to try one of those stands to try and help you. There's okay, thank actually, you. Um, this is Ashley Greger. Um, there's a thing you can turn on under your camera settings, I think it is. It's tilt by tilt guidance, where it'll kind of like help align you to where the paper is. Because it'll oh, right. how much is in the camera. Oh, yay, camera. thanks. Right, and it, it, it still works similar to seeing AI. Um, it may not be able to capture everything because if you have your camera at an angle, um, it, a portion of that text may be blurry. So you'll only get the portion it was able to pick up, of course. Okay, thank you. Well, I, um, I just want to say thank you so much, Angelo. This information was very helpful. You, you know, I just want to let everybody know that this is super great that resource that we have the resource and we have the app application, but it's so crazy to go out there and kind of personalize that. So sometimes I just want to have somebody to come, you know, specifically for my daughter and you see, this one is perfect for you. Let me show you how to store it. Let me show your daughter how to use it, but it's not that easy. But this one, it gives mm -hmm. us a little bit of a help with that. Thank you so much, Angelo. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Yeah, you're welcome. And I want to thank everyone out there that provided some information. I've learned quite a bit myself. I'm definitely going to look at some of the apps that were discussed today. Um, actually, I was doing that as, as I was listening to everyone else. Um, but, you know, I want to applaud all of you. Um, you know, you're doing a great job with your kids. Attending this is, is an awesome thing. And I appreciate that from all of you. Um, also be aware that there is help out there um, with iOS devices. That if you call up Apple, um, you can actually find someone that can assist you uh, and walk you through the accessibility features. Some stores, especially in Manhattan um, on 14th Street and the one uh, that's close to the agency, uh, Lighthouse uh, on 68th and Broadway, they work with a lot of our consumers. So they actually have someone on staff that can show them where the accessibility is and help them adjust it to their needs. Uh, also, uh, unfortunately due to COVID, um, but I'm hoping that things open up soon, um, the Hisco Library um, also uh, provides free training on Saturdays, but um, they've, uh, they don't have that yet. Hopefully, it'll open up again soon. And uh, all you would have to do is call up the library, the Hisco library, and uh, start scheduling. Uh, there might be a long list down, down the road, unfortunately. But try and jump on those things as quickly as possible. There is a lot of free training out there. And, you know, thanks to Sheila for putting this together. Um, we can share that information. Yes, can I just say one more thing? Yeah. I just wanted to say that Andrew High School Library actually does free um, virtual training for people, a one-on-one, -on -one, where sometimes they do specific things. They do it in a group setting. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. I'm glad they started doing that as well. Um, and, and speaking of resources, we'd like to have, uh, we're having our next presentation will be Monday, um, May 17th, same time. And we'll be talking about building resilience in children and teens with Dr. Laura Newman. She's really an amazing, if you don't, haven't heard her talk, she gives some really wonderful practical advice. So um, if you're available, we'd love to have you back with us. So uh, thank you everybody for coming on tonight. And thank you, Angel, again, for all this wonderful information. And sure. Thank you for having me. Yeah, hope to talk to you guys all soon. Um, have a good night, everybody. Okay, take care, everyone.